this Malaysia travel vlog, we visit the town of Dabong, an eco paradise in the middle of the Malaysian jungle. Hi, I'm Jay. And I'm John. And we're Bucket List Travellers. And we're coming to you from Dabong, Malaysia. Dabong is a small town on the Malaysian jungle railway. It has become an eco-tourism destination in recent years with plenty of fun activities on offer. We took the jungle train from Kuala Krai. From the amount of people that are getting off the train, Dabong is very popular. And we're so lucky to find local guide Matt, thanks to helpful locals whom we'd met on our train journey. Okay, we've just arrived in Dabong and it's been a little bit hard to organise. So there's not much accommodation in Dabong and we've just been extra lucky. We met a guy on the train, uh, he got us in contact with some other people and the other people have delivered. So it's been really fantastic. So looking forward to a good trip today. Our first activity for the day was to visit the Gua Ikang complex, also known as the Fish Cave complex. Okay, off we go. This area, before this, uh, in the ocean. Oh, really? Above, oh, the, wow. above the sea. Above the sea level, uh, a million years ago. Wow. <laughs> so this one is seaweed fossil. Oh, oh, wow. Looks like it's peak hour for the cave. It's a beautiful area. There's lots of wildlife in the jungle area around here. Uh, apparently there's monkeys if you come early in the morning, but we're here at a busy time of day, so uh, we've scared the monkeys away. We've got a few caves to see. We're climbing up the next one. This ray of light the name of the cave, this is Sunlight, is it called Sunlight Cave? This one? Ray, ray Cave. Book, book, uh, sun Ray. Sun Ray. Oh, oh got light. We've timed it just right. And that looks pretty cool. The sunlight only lasts for a very short window. It's 11 to 11.30 each morning. And when it's there, you can go down under that beam of light and it's really a magical experience so yeah if you do come here definitely try and get that window because this is one of the best things to see in Dabong. The whole shape oh. like a uh, plant tummy. There you go. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Okay, this is going to be interesting. This is the, the tricky bit. <laughs> It's gonna be interesting. So this whole name secondary birth hole. <laughs> A second birth. Mm. <laughs> so you you need to see. Right. Mm. Right. It's gonna be interesting. Okay. Oh, I should have worn my rashi. It's better you to your shoulder. Move your shoulder. Okay. Oh. <laughs> uh, why didn't you bring a rash first, Jack? Mm. Okay. More, more. Actually, I do have my rash face. Ah, oh, change it over then. Yeah. Okay, okay off you go. How did you get through there? With great difficulty. Oh, jeez. This is my shark. You oh. can do it. <laughs> I'm not claustrophobic. I'm not claustrophobic. <laughs> Crazy man. Think thin. Too much KFC last night. Too much KFC. Uh, oh boy. Whew, I did it. Ah! Okay, off you go. Okay. 
Well, if you're claustrophobic, this may not be the best activity for you. It's pretty tight in here. Okay, we've just come through our final cave and now we're walking back. So we're, the first little bit is full of leeches apparently, but only in the early morning. So hopefully we won't get attacked. into this cave right now because a lot of bats migrated here after it got too busy for them in the other cave. Because the bats came and settled here they've done all their bat droppings and the water's actually turned quite dark. So people used to swim here but you can't anymore. If you do then your skin will get really itchy so not recommended. So during the monsoon season the water gets up to the that level that, yeah, where you see, see those rocks there. And way back in 1993, people could ride boats and graffiti the top of the cave. So that goes to show how high the water can rise during the monsoon season. That's crazy. Squeezing through tight spaces really worked up an appetite. So we found a number of restaurants and street food stalls about five minutes drive from our next destination, Jalawang Waterfall. For lunch today we've got a few different things so we came to this corner which has a few different eateries and even street food stalls so we've got some beef rang dang with rice that was six ringgit and then we've got a coconut shake for three ringgit uh, we've got four pieces of fried banana for one ringgit and then we've seen this is a japanese dish but it seems to be a very popular street food in this part of Malaysia. It's takoyaki, which is like little balls of, I think it's seafood. Um, and it comes from Osaka in Japan. So we've had it in Osaka, um, but we haven't had it much since then. So I'm interested to try the Malaysian version. So coconut shakes are fast becoming our favorite drink in Malaysia. They're so nice and refreshing. I love the scoop of ice cream on the top as well. Mm. Uh, that beautiful coconut flavor is just so creamy. Mm, so good. Next stop was Jelawang Waterfall, located in the Ganong Stong State Park. This is the tallest waterfall in Malaysia and also one of the tallest waterfalls in Southeast Asia at over 305 meters or a thousand feet. Jalawong Waterfall is the highest waterfall in Southeast Asia. If you want to stay right near the waterfall, there is accommodation here and chalets start from 150 ringgit per chalet per night. This pipe here is taking water directly from the waterfall to the villages below, so the water is pure enough to drink directly. This drawbridge here is the start of the trek up to the top of the mountain. So you can get to the top of Jelawang waterfall. Now, it is a one to two hour hike. You need to book a guide to do it and there are also permits involved too. So make sure you allow for enough time to organize all that. We didn't unfortunately. Being here in the waterfall is certainly uh, good enough. It's pretty amazing being here at the highest waterfall in Southeast Asia. You can also do hikes to the top of the mountain for sunrise. So expect to get up around 4 a.m. in the morning and hike all the way up. So to get the most out of your stay in Dabong, uh, we recommend you stay for two nights and three days. So this first bridge is a bit rickety. So if you're afraid of heights, then you might be a bit nervous. So we've got 
got a great tour guide here. Hi, my name is Matt. Uh, I'm Tavrishka at Dabung. So if you want to come to Jelawang Waterfall, you can contact me in Facebook or IG story. We'll put all of Matt's details uh, in our description. So make sure when you're in Dabong, you come with Matt. The tours are awesome. In addition to visiting the waterfall, there are plenty more outdoor activities to do in this area, including zip lining, tubing, ATV rides and rafting. So if you want an easier experience, then you can come to the lookout point that's overlooking the waterfall. This is a great place to come and take some photographs. We found that there weren't too many accommodation options available in Dabong, and we're very lucky to have found a room at the Rose Guest House. It was comfortable accommodation, the owners were lovely, and we paid 90 ringgit for one night. Dabong is quite a small town, and you might have a bit of difficulty finding a place to eat at night. But there is Nora Bistro. It's right next to the station, so you really can't miss it. And we've just got a couple of options tonight. So we've gone pretty basic tonight. We've gone the nazi garang, so the fried rice with chicken. Uh, but this one here is a little bit more different. So this is called a caribou and it's the seafood caribou. So I don't think we've tried anything like that before. So that'll be quite interesting. I might try that first, actually. I can see some octopus in there. I, there's some prawns too and I think there are fish pieces as well so it's quite a well-rounded seafood caribou Ooh. Mm. Oh, I like this yeah so the caribou sauce is, I would say it's Thai style so it's fragrant there's there's a bit of chili in there I think there's lemongrass, there's lime in there too. Oh. <laughs> I've got I've got a little friend who's wanting to say hi. Hello. You didn't say hi to me before. No. Ah cats in Malaysia. Yeah, so this is this is really delicious. Mm. And it's got a little bit of sweetness there too. So that's, that's really nice. So the Nazi Garang, let's try it. This is actually the first Nazi Garang in six weeks that we've had in all of Malaysia. So I think we're doing pretty well. And so the Nazi Garang, it's okay. It's, it's good fuel, so it'll, it'll fill you up. And this comes with a bit of chili sauce as well. So, so not, not too bad. So all together, this was seven ringgit for the Nazi Garang and the caribou was 10 ringgit. For breakfast the next morning, our hosts at Rose Hotel brought us to Kadai Makan, a popular local eatery just a short walk from the train station. We've got a couple of dishes here. Nazi caribou, which is a blue rice, comes with chicken and a few accompaniments. And then we've got noodles with egg. So this looks really delicious. Nice squeeze of lime here. This place seems to be really popular with the locals, and they've got like a buffet style door with these already cooked, and you just choose what you want. Mm. Mm. Oh, that's really nice. You've got the acidity of the lime and the spiciness of that sambal, and then you've got a little bit of crunch of I think this is coconut, um, and the blue rice is really nice as well. Mm. So this dish is very popular in this area of Malaysia and yeah, you should definitely check it out even if it's just the colours alone, it's just so vibrant. We hope you enjoyed our Malaysia travel vlog about Dabong, Malaysia. If you did, make sure you hit that like button and leave us a comment. We make videos like this every week, so if you want to follow us on our travels around the world, be sure to subscribe. We are Bucket List Travellers. See you next time.